Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you today to make my contribution to the budget debate. Firstly, let me congratulate the Minister of Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, and his team for the preparation work which produced the budget speech and the documents related to the expenditures. The budget theme, Mr. Speaker, a pathway to recovery, economic dynamism, and resilience adequately reflects Guyana's story. The legacy inherited from the APNU AFC government after just five years and the roadmap to be followed by the People's Progressive Party civic government to right the wrongs and to place our country and its economy on a road to progress and prosperity for all of the people of Guyana, for one Guyana. Mr. Speaker, the wrongs committed by the APNU AFC government will be corrected by the PPP civic government. We will address this in the recovery targets. The PPP civic government inherited what can best be described as a disastrous situation, laced with increased corruption, discrimination, neopotism, neglect of the entire population, failure to deliver on their manifesto promises, failure to execute their 100-day campaign plans, and the so-called 10-point strategic plan for hinterland development. Mr. Speaker, more unashamedly, the attempt to steal the March 2020 elections, plunging Guyana into five months of threat to derail democracy and the numerous breaches of the Constitution after the no confidence motion and after the elections. The elections which the PPP Civic won fair and square. Mr. Speaker, the fate demonstrated by our people of Guyana, our country, and the leadership of the People's Progressive Party Civic, with the support from the smaller political parties and a significant block of the international community, including a core of young Guyanese men and women who lent full support to avoid the theft of the March 2nd election by the APNU AFC politicians, leaders, and activists. Could this, Mr. Speaker, be the moral high ground they subscribe to themselves and pretending to be the paragon of virtue while lecturing in this house about constitutionality when it took the Caribbean Court of Justice to correct them, to remind them, and to bring home to them that they were in full breach of their own constitution, the constitution of the Republic of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, many of whom now occupy the opposition seats in this honorable house, and what is funny, Mr. Speaker, is that they are so bold-faced, they continue to be oblivious of the fact that no one take them seriously as they see, as they are seen as destabilizers to democracy and to development and to the people of this nation. The majority of the electorate, Mr. Speaker, has rejected the APNU AFC in the last election. Despite this, their agents continues to puddle, to peddle the outdated trick and argument. They continue to use hate and racial overtones, sowing discord even in this honorable house and among the people of our nation, as every APNU AFC member of parliament has presented a hate and racially laced speech to this house. Mr. Speaker, this is shameful, 
shameful of those who claim to be representing, as they say, close to 50% of the electorate. I now see, Mr. Speaker, why the electorate and the Guyanese nation will never take this group, this bunch, this team of APNU AFC politician who sits in this honorable house seriously. Mr. Mr. Ch Mr. Speaker, I want to get to the former President Granger strategic plan for hinterland development. Because in this house over the last four days, well, today is the fourth day, we have heard how much the APNU AFC government has done for the people of this country. But in the strategic plan he outlined for hinterland development, I want to bring home to them that the APNU AFC led Granger administration was a complete failure when it came to hinterland development. Mr. Speaker, the APNU AFC legacy of non-performances in the sector of Amerindian development is well known across this country and not only in the hinterland. The AP and UAFC coalition president each year since 2006 to 2019, the only public forum where you will cite the former president was at the NTC conference, where he regaled Amerindian leaders with a fantasy 10-point strategic plan for hinterland development and the lofty village improvement plans, which has never materialized and was never funded over the last five years. And yet in this house, Mr. Speaker, today, yesterday, and two days prior, I keep hearing about the VIPs. Mr. Speaker, can anyone here point us to any project or village improvement project over the last five years, which was funded by the APNU AFC government, there will be none. Because the only funding the APNU AFC administration provided to the Amerindian villages was the presidential grant fund established by the PPP civic government under the leadership of the now Vice President Barrett Jagdeel. Mr. Speaker, in that five years, they did not even take the time to increase the presidential grant. In fact, Mr. Speaker, they put on conditions and requirements for accessing the presidential grant that only a mere 40% of the communities and villages across the hinterland were able to access those funds to stimulate some level of economic activities in those villages. That is a complete shameful act. Today, Mr. Speaker, one of the first things that we have done was to encourage the village councils to collaborate with their residents and villagers to come up with the proposals and access the presidential fund without conditions and requirements. Mr. Speaker, I can stand here today and say that in the last three months, almost all the villages in the hinterland, 213 Amerindian villages have accessed the presidential grant fund. And in this 2021 budget, Mr. Speaker, we have 300 million Guyana dollars where another 220 Amerindian village settlement and satellites will receive those grants to stimulate their economy. Speaker, to complement the presidential grant fund, only this, in the recent period, we have now provided 1.73 billion Guyana dollars to support Amerindian communities, villages, and satellites to withstand and mitigate the harmful and negative impact from the pandemic which this country is suffering from. And I repeat, $1.73 billion, something which the APNU AFC 
government failed to provide to stimulate the village economy, to create jobs, to provide investment fund for women, youths, and the village council to ensure that they too benefit from the resources and also the, the benefit from this country. Mr. Speaker, it is so a shame. It is a shameful act when members of this House from the opposite side, from the AP and UAFC side, could stand up in this House and say to us that they have traveled the length and breadth of this country in the hinterland and that they have traveled so much, but they have traveled, wasted $1.6 billion in, 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 in finances, and they have done nothing. What have you traveled for? Was it a vacation? Was it sightseeing? Was it for tourism, personal family affairs, tourism, and vacation? Mr. Speaker, they need to answer to this house because every single village you go to, Mr. Speaker, one of the most complaint you get is that within the last five years, they have not seen any minister coming to many communities in the villages. It was only in March or close to March, the first three months of 2020, that we have seen ministers fanning out to the hinterland. We have had ministers going to Cato, ministers going to Paramakutoy, and Mr. Speaker, the results of the election was glaring. I don't know if they read or they understand the results, but what they took to the people in the last leg of their few months in office was cheap watches, sandals, cheap cologne, umbrellas, and jerseys. Amerindians are sensible Guyanese. Amerindians have been educated for 23 years under our government, and they can judge, and they have judged you well. And that is why those electorate who voted in Region 9, it became so hurtful to the AP and UAFC that they grieved for the lost in Region 1, 9, and also in many of the communities which they have neglected. And therefore, the fallacy, the dream world, the fantasy world in which the members of parliament of AP and UAFC, especially the Amerindian MPs on the AP and UAFC side, is living, you're living in a fantasy world. You're fooling yourself. You cannot, you cannot convince and influence the Amerindian population today, and therefore they have spoken with their vote. Mr. Speaker, the com the, Mr. Speaker, anyone who attempt to heckle what I've just said, they've lost in their own village. They've lost many of the villages in the region that they come from, including in Region 9, the MP who just spoke before me, he has lost that region because they have neglected the people. They have refused to listen to the people. They have refused to, de to deliver development services, goods to the people, and the people have voted against them. Mr. Speaker, I want to take some time to talk and to respond to the CSO issue. Mr. Speaker, in the last budget debate in 2015, and also in 2020, this matter was put to rest. I stood here, Mr. Speaker, in, at that time and read the letter, which is still filed in the ministry, where the honorable member who is a minister today had a cabinet document which said that we should go ahead and pay. He also Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister, uh, Minister today has also, when he was a PS, wrote that the payment will be made. What we have seen is the incoming government refused to honor the cabinet decision, refused to honor the, the check, and did refuse to renew the cycle of CSO to 
the program. Mr. Speaker, and they speak about haze. They have claimed that 2,500 2, businesses and enterprise has been created. It is documented, Mr. Speaker, as such. But when you go to the communities, you cannot even find more than one or you find zero, nothing. And I'll follow the footstep of my honorable member who said that there is nothing, and he spelt the word N-O-T-H-I-N-G. There's no program. How many business and enterprise exist in Kako? How many in Waramadong? How many in, in Warwater? How many at Keto? How many at Kaibarupai? How many in Tusining? How many in Shulina, Mr. Speaker? They can take their time in opposition now and go with lenses or microscope to examine where those phantom enterprises and business exist. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, that is the, that is the legacy of Hayes. And Mr. Speaker, they claim that we have not renewed his program, but there is also correspondence from the then minister who no longer sits in this house, the Honorable Sidney Alicock, when he was minister, writing to the Minister of Finance, stating that in 2019, there was no more money to address the Hayes program, and he had to disconnect all the staff that were in the region and the entire program, and that he was going to keep four staff to ensure that they tie up the documentation for that program. Mr. Speaker, that is exactly what occurred. They have all manner of data in the report, but are non-existent in the field legacy. Mr. Speaker, I heard here the honorable members talking about $10,000 for the children and that how the PPP civic government promised 50000 in 2020. Mr. Speaker, I want to recall and to remind this house, it was the AP and UAFC government who removed the 10000 because we gave cash grant to the children. It is the PPP civic government who is back in office and who will restart the program with $15,000 per child. Mr. Speaker, and for the want of understanding of our commitment and promises to the children of this nation, before the end of our term, every child will receive $50,000. Mr. Speaker, the school uniform program. I'm speaking about these, Mr. Speaker, because these are programs and measures that directly impact on the children of the hinterland. Mr. Speaker, on, when we left office, we had $2,400 to provide one school uniform per child for the hinterland. Mr. Speaker, the government found no interest in increasing it. It was the PPP civic government when we came back in office in the last three months that we have, in, in the last emergency budget, that we increased it to 4,000 per child. And we have delivered already, Mr. Speaker. Within the first three months of our office, we delivered to every single hinterland student 4,000 for the school uniform assistance. Mr. Speaker, I now turn to I now turn to the CSO program. We have stood true to our word to the youths of this country. We have reinstated as soon as we came into office the CSO program. And Mr. Speaker, someone here articulated how much grateful the communities are to have the CSO program back. Mr. Speaker, we they talk about training for the young people. I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that the training in the first component when we were in office between 2013 to 2015, it was in the concept, but it was this ban by your government. In this year, Mr. Speaker, 
the training component of the CSO program has been budgeted. And Mr. Speaker, $820 million is going towards building capacity and empowering Amerindian youths under the CSO program. Mr. Speaker, that is what you call interest in youths. That is what you call de delivering on our commitment to young people. And look around our parliament and examine our cabinet. 90% or 99% of our members are young, youthful Guyanese. Mr. Speaker, getting back again to the Granger-led administration, strategic plan for hinterland development. One of it was the hinterland energy development program. Mr. Speaker, this is a, this was a, and this is a failure. You go around the communities and the villages. There is no hinterland energy development program. What you will find is a few scattered, incomplete installation of standalone solar units, they call it. You go to St. Monica, the battery panel is there. The, 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 the solar panels are scattered in different buildings. Go to um, Kabakaburi, it's the same thing. Go to Kako, it's the same thing. Go to Monkey Mountain, it is the same thing. You see all these panels piled in buildings, incomplete, not installed, Mr. Speaker. They even announced in this house in 2015 that they have established a solar farm in Maikobi, it is in the records, it is in the Hansard. But I took the time, like my honorable com um, member, Yvonne Pearson, we went to Maikobi looking for the established for solar farm. What did we find? Nothing. It's the same story like the smart classrooms we have just heard, nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G, nothing. Mr. Speaker, I want to recall of the 6,000 panels procured under the PPP civic government when we left office, which was misdirected to State House and to the office of the presidency, instead to the Amerindian communities, to the hinterland communities, and to the remote riverine communities. That was the purpose for acquiring 6,000 additional solar panels to be given to those who needed it. But they took it all for themselves. Mr. Speaker, I want to announce here today that our government in this year will be delivering 35,000 household solar units across the hinterlands and remote communities. And before the end of the year, the, we will deliver on this. Mr. Speaker, that is what you call delivering your commitments to the people, because that is a manifesto promise that we will enhance and increase the opportunity for Amerindians and hinterland residents to receive solar power in their homes. Mr. Speaker, I also want to talk about the Hinterland Indigenous Land Commission, another strategic plan by the APNU AFC Granger-led administration, which was a total failure. Total to the extent that even the Amerindian groups and institutions, including the NTC, objected to it because the objective of that commission was to review and to revise lands provided to Amerindians under the PPP Civic Government. Mr. Speaker, it was a callous attempt to take away lands from Amerindians. And we have seen the results because they did not get their own way. The monies that were left to address land titling and demarcation, 10.7 million US dollars, was only spent on salaries, 
daily subsistence and allowances for a, bun for a team that knew not how to work. They put the project on pause. But I want to say to this house, despite they have spent three million US and more on salaries, allowances, and subsistence allowances, we will take the remaining six million US and address the Amerindian land titling project once again. We have one year, Mr. Speaker, to complete the targeted um, number of titling and demarcation, something which was not done in five years by the APNU AFC. I would like the, the, the honorable member of the, of, from Region 9 MP, geographical MP on the APNU AFC side to take that back to the people. Let them listen now. Mr. Speaker, I also want to talk about some other matters as it relates to indigenous development. This year, Mr. Speaker, we will be training CSOs, and I want to lay this in the record. 174 young CSOs will be trained in computer literacy. We have already completed training of 57 in the first three months of our government. We will train 220 young male and female CSOs in, Mr. Speaker, the installation of solar panels and also in maintenance of other infrastructure in their communities. Mr. Speaker, we will also train 220 drivers because, Mr. Speaker, our government has been the forerunner in revolutionizing transport systems in the hinterland. Under the last five years, the transport or the mode of transport, the vehicles, the tractors, the ATVs was left without maintenance. Amerindian villages, in Region 8, all their ATV were done by 2017 and 2018. When they approach the MOIPA, you know, the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, for support, they even raised it at the NTCs for the last three NTCs held under the MOIPA, asking the government of that day, of the day then, to help them to get those vehicles back on track you know what they did? They said, no, we are not going to do it. Mr. Speaker, it saddens us to see Chiang Mao Tushau walking to RDC meeting on the AP and UAFC tenure, taking six hours to get from Chiang Mao to Cato. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you here today that we are going to replenish ATVs in Region 8, and we are going to assist them in repairing all those that are done so that they can have at least one single mode of transportation to assist them to administer their village. Mr. Speaker, your, Mr. Speaker the member on the other side of the divide, I mean the other side in the opposition, the AP and UAFC, can do well to begin to conduct herself and do the people's job to get out there and represent the people and not to take sweets and throw it up in the air when she visits her community and ask them to catch. One resident had to ups, or as they say in Creole language, ups the den, um, the den opposition MP that our children are not dogs. So don't throw the sweets up in the air put them in a line and give the sweets in their hands. We have the video, Mr. Speaker. What a shame. It is not a joke, it's an I pass to the indigenous children of our country. Mr. Speaker, we spe they speak about ICT hubs and how much they have done for the hinterland as respect to the ICT program. Mr. Speaker, if they had done and the work was done successfully, 
72, as they claim, 72 villages, village children would have been logged in to the learning channel. Today, Mr. Speaker, when they, when they lashed their chest in 2015 and saying one minister actually practically got up in the House, in Parliament, and said when they arrived in Yupakari, they took their phone out when they arrived under the mango tree and they were able to connect to the internet and they downloaded Animal Kingdom, some fancy thing, and all the children gathered. Mr. Speaker, we would like to see all the children gathered around an internet hub logged into the learning channel. Mr. Speaker, let me tell you what this government will do. The PPP civic government will do. You have to get an extension. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask for the honorable member to be given five minutes to conclude her presentation. Thank you, Honorable Minister Tashira. Honorable Minister Sukai, you may continue to conclude. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the People's Progressive Party Civic will restart the ICT program, and we will, in two years, install 200 systems for Amerindian and hinterland communities. We are going to deliver. In fact, in the last three months, we have already transported more than 10 batch of equipment for installation in Region 9. Mr. Speaker, it is a sudden time when a government can waste taxpayers' money because 100, 100 ICT hub facility was constructed and furnished, and they abandoned it. And let's talk about health care services and entitlement. You, Mr. Speaker, the other side had a geriatric parliament and cabinet and spent millions going into billions in removing heart, looking after kneecaps, taking out stones, and going all over in Ireland to do exactly what they're accusing us to do. Mr. Speaker, let's get it straight. They had to lift you, Mr. Speaker, honorable member, bring them into parliament when you yourself was being serviced Mr. Speaker, Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker, was spending taxpayers' money to correct the, the problems she had. It's nice to get personal on this side with us, but it's never nice to get personal when we get personal on the other side. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member spoke about the Green Institute. Mr. Speaker, Millions were spent on the Green Institute. Commission and boasted about in the newspaper, Mr. Speaker, on investigation this year. The Green Institute is but a shell. There's nothing there. So how can this government up and start? We have to now examine that project and make provision for it for the future. Shameful. They went there bubbling with ribbons and balloons, cutting, but there is nothing, a bare shell. A shame on you. Shame on you. Hinterland Poverty Program was another Granger-led administration promise to the hinterland. Mr. Speaker, you're talking about poverty reduction. Under the AFC, APNU government, there was no support for women and enterprise, none whatsoever, Mr. Speaker, in the hinterland. Mr. Speaker, tell me one project in the hinterland which the AP and UAFC government did for women. What they do done is to go and list and record the PPP civic government projects that existed there when they took office. Mr. Speaker, let us talk about how they treated, how they treated our, our youths, our women, and the hinterland. Mr. Speaker, they put that on air fear. They put that on freight. And then in 2015, 
as an election gimmick. They said in the parliament then that they're going to remove it, but they never removed it. It is this government that has made amends to the people of the hinterland, and we are removing, we remove that. Mr. Speaker, that is what we call our commitment to the people. We are delivering on every promise and commitment to the nation. Mr. Speaker, as we, we talk about, <clears throat> as we talk about support for hinterland riverine communities, this year's, Mr. Speaker, we will once more budget, and we budgeted for outboard engines, $42 million in outboard engines, boat and engines, something never heard of under the APNU AFC. We are going, we have budgeted for agricultural support. And Mr. Speaker, agricultural support, we will deliver very shortly 112 tractors to Amerindian communities. And in 2021 budget, we have made provision to procure 112 plow and harrow to enhance the agricultural production of the hinterland and the Amerindian communities. The tractors, Mr. Speaker, will support transportation service. It will also enhance the forestry sector and of course, agree. And that is a commitment we have made once more. Every single you village you go now, Honorable Minister. every single village you go to, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Speaker, the farmers are asking for chemicals to fight Akushi ants. In the last five years, they have not delivered. Honorable Member Don Hastings will remember that the PPP Civic led teams of spray, spring teams to control Akushians in Region 7. We provided fast stock and Akushians bait across Region 1, 9, 7, 10, etc. Mr. Speaker, they have done nothing in the last five years to enhance food security, livelihood options, and economic activities in the hinterland. In fact, look at their record on the performance. Rigging, thank you, bullying, etc. Mr. Speaker, and thank you. And that is why we have seen that they will remain on the opposite side for a long, long time.